I don't know about you guys, but meal prepping and having to think about what I'm going to feed myself and making sure that it's things that are going to optimize my health and my performance. It's the last thing that I want to do. And especially now, I am a public accountant and we are going into busy season where I have like negative time available to be devoting to meal planning, meal prepping, and all the things. But I have some tips that will hopefully help myself and you guys as well, because I know if you have a horse, if you have a job, if you have kids, all the things, I know none of us have time for any of this. Welcome back to another episode of Strong in the Saddle. I'm your host, Katrina. And before we get into this week's episode, if you could please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. If you are on YouTube, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if any of the tips I'm about to give help you out. And subscribe to the channel. And be sure to follow me on Instagram, at Strong in the Saddle. And with all of that, let's get into this week's episode, which is all about meal planning, meal prepping for the busy equestrian, because I definitely fall into that category. Like I said, we are rolling into tax season now. Last tax season, I worked 350 hours in March, and then I worked another 350 hours in April. I do not have time to be like I need to be as efficient with my time as possible, but at the same time, I don't wanna just be eating hungry man dinners. I do not want to eat out all the time. So I need to find this balance of, yes, being efficient with my time, but also providing my body with very nutri nutritionally dense foods that make me feel good and are just, yeah, good for my body, which that does feel like an impossible task, but trust me, I did it last year during that very busy tax season. It is possible. So before we get into my actual tips, I just wanna say like why we would even bother with doing things like meal planning and meal prepping. The biggest one is it saves time. If you're able to prep several meals at once and maybe it takes an hour, that saves a ton of time instead of like prepping a meal every single meal that you eat in a day or over the, over the course of several days. If you can just get it all done at once, that saves a pile of time. I feel like planning it all out ahead of time also re just reduces stress. If I've been at work all day during tax season, like, the office during tax season is beyond stressful. The last thing that I want to do is like on my drive home, be stressing about what am I cooking for me and my husband tonight? What do we have in the fridge? Planning that all out ahead of time is it reduces stress because then I can just get home. I've either pre-prepped something already or I know exactly what I need to prep when I get home. There's no yeah, searching for recipes at last minute or throwing something together that maybe we don't even like. I would also say that meal planning and giving this some forethought, it does really work to support any health goals that you have, any performance goals that you have, and just helps you to avoid making unhealthy choices. If you know ahead of time, like I'm having this vegetable with this protein, and this carbohydrate at my meal and like it's already been pre-planned it's maybe even already made like there's way less of a chance that you're going to grab some fast food option that's a lot less supportive to your health goals 
And I would also say meal planning and meal prepping. It really, really helps you with being consistent. I think one thing that people struggle with a lot with their health and fitness goals is consistency. Like they might start off really good in January or, you know, start good on Monday, but then it just kind of falls off and then you just, you aren't consistent anymore. But if you start this and once you get into a groove, like it is so easy to be consistent because you get to a point where you aren't even thinking about it. It's just something that you do. So for all of those reasons, whether it just, it be all of those reasons or one, like for me, again, the whole time thing is huge, then that makes it all worth it to do the meal planning, do the meal prep. Yes, absolutely. I will just say one other kind of bonus to this whole meal prep, meal planning situation is it dramatically reduces food waste. So when I go to the grocery store, I know exactly what I'm going to be eating for the next week because I've planned it out and I only buy what I need. So like literally we go through so little garbage around here, like in terms of kitchen waste, because we don't waste food. The only thing I potentially waste is if maybe some bananas go bad soon or like spinach, I feel like always goes bad really fast. But like other than that, like we have very, very little kitchen waste and that's just because I'm very much a planner and only buy what I know we will need. So my first tip with getting as efficient as possible with your meal prepping, meal planning, actually doesn't involve any planning. So if you don't want to specifically say, we're having this supper on Monday, this supper on Tuesday, like what you can do instead is just batch cook some things that you know you would consider eating during the week. So I would say batch cooking a carbohydrate like rice or quinoa, batch cook a bunch of that, and then you just have it in the fridge ready to go. It'll last, like if you cook it on a Sunday, it'll, it'll be good for the week. So batch cooking a bunch of that. You could cut up a bunch of vegetables. So you have, I don't know, your carrots, broccoli, whatever kind of vegetables you want, just all batch cut. You could even roast some of them. Roast vegetables last in the fridge for several days as well. You can batch cook some protein. So you could grill a bunch of chicken breasts or maybe make a bunch of turkey burgers or some meatballs or something like that. And then again, those will last in the fridge for I would say four days. Alternatively, you could even, and this is what I do, I will batch cook protein for the entire week. I will keep four, three or four days worth in the fridge and then the rest goes in the freezer and it actually thaws really good. So I'll take it out like the day before I know I wanna eat it and then it's good to go. You can also batch cook things like soups, stews, chilies. And again, like you, those will last in the fridge for three days. You can freeze portions and then again just take it out when you're ready to go so you don't have to necessarily say we're eating this each day but you have these options available that are already pre-cooked for when you feel like having them if you don't really know where to start with planning and they're just coming up blank there's an app for that so I would definitely encourage you to go to the app store, find a meal planning app. Um, I personally don't know of any of them, but if you're having trouble like structuring this, definitely be sure to check out some meal planning apps because those, those will definitely help you out. Another tip is when you do have time, sit down and run through a list of these are the foods that we like to eat. These are the meals we really like to eat. And you can also just go on the internet and say, okay, what are some quick and easy recipes that I can just have in my arsenal to pull out on a random Thursday night when I am feeling very crunched for time. If you just have those recipes and they consist of, and this is important, pick recipes that you typically do have the ingredients for. 
Don't be picking recipes that have a million ingredients that you don't typically have on hand. So I would say try to stick to recipes that are basics. So they might call for things like potatoes or rice. They call for the usual vegetables that you have on hand, whether that be like broccoli or if you always have lettuce on hand or maybe some cabbage. And then a protein that you usually have on hand, whether that's chicken or beef, whatever it is. And then make sure it's not calling for some obscure sauce or seasoning. Like make sure it's like garlic, salt, pepper, any kind of herbs that you usually have on hand. Like making sure that you're not picking recipes that are setting you up for failure basically it's just like those basic rec recipes that you know you like that are quick to make and that you're likely going to have the ingredients on hand for my next tip is if you are on the go which i know a lot of us are on the go constantly and it can be very very tough to stay on track in terms of your nutrition make sure you're fueling your body properly and not just defaulting to the McDonald's drive through So one of those would be just to have non-perishable options on hand. So that could be things like protein bars, but I would caution and just make sure you're picking protein bars that don't have a ton of garbage in them, that they don't have a ton of sugar and stuff like that. Um, I'm a fan of keeping like a shaker bottle and keeping a scoop of protein in that. And then if need be, I can just add water, shake it up. And then that's like 30 grams of protein. Keeping things like dried fruit or even not dried fruit, like an apple or bananas or an orange. Those are super easy to transport. Things like trail mix, but again, just making sure they're not covered in I don't know, corn syrup or whatever some of them are covered in. Keeping those non-perishable things in your truck or in your purse, you don't have to worry about them being bad and they're just ready to go whenever you need them. You can also pack a cooler and this is what I do. I have a lunch kit and it will have something like a meal with in a meal prep container with rice and a protein and some sort of vegetable. Usually I have some sort of access to a microwave, but if I don't, like sometimes I put it on the dash of my truck to, like half an hour before I'm going to eat it just to warm it up a bit or just eat it cold. Like I honestly would prefer eating that meal cold than having to suffer the consequences of eating a greasy hamburger at a fast food chain or something like that. So that is an option if, like I said, you're willing to eat some cold food once in a while or dashboard warmed up food, that's an option. Another option, if you know you're gonna be like gone all day, you're gonna come home late and you're not gonna have the energy or really the time to cook a meal, a slow cooker could be your best friend. So you could throw in, throw together a quick chili or something, which takes no time at all to throw all those things in a slow cooker and then let it sit for the 10 hours that you're gone or whatever and then it's ready to go and on top of that there's usually leftovers because you can make a decent sized portion in a slow cooker and then you have it for the next couple of days if need be so I would definitely say utilizing a slow cooker anytime that you can for sure. So with all of that being said, I kind of want to give you guys a real life example of how this plays out with what I do. So for breakfast, I I usually eat the same thing for breakfast every morning. I like what I have for breakfast, so I don't really have the need to change it up. The only thing I do change is I do mix um, fruit in my oatmeal in the morning and I will just rotate what fruit I'm putting in there. So for that, I actually use frozen fruit a lot and definitely do not stray away from using frozen fruits and vegetables. They are just as nutritious, if not more nutritious than like your fresh produce, just because they're frozen at the peak of ripeness. So like here in Canada in winter, we do not have the greatest produce selection. So like actually using frozen fruit and vegetables might be a more nutrient dense option for you. So don't stray away from using that sort of a thing. 
So I will rotate my fruit in my breakfast in the morning, but just so I don't even have to think about it, I make the same thing for breakfast every single morning. One thing I do like to take to work with me is overnight oats. So I quickly mix that up in the evening. I don't even think it takes me 10 minutes to do that. And again, I might rotate through the fruit that I'm putting in there. Sometimes I make it like a pumpkin overnight oats. So I'll put pumpkin in there. So, you know, like the only decision I'm having to make is what fruit do I feel like having? And I always try to have a couple different bags. So I'll have like maybe just strawberries. I'll have like a berry blend and then I'll have more of like a tropical blend with mango and pineapple and that sort of a thing. So that's kind of my morning. For any snacks, I'll pack things like walnuts, uh, dried fruit like prunes or apricots. I'll have some like an orange or something like that. I really like packing pod peas because like that is so quick. Just dump it in a Ziploc bag. It's good to go. I might have a little container of hummus to eat with it. Again, hardly any time at all to be packing those sorts of things. For my lunch, this is where the meal prep kind of comes into play. So every weekend for an hour, I take an hour to prep all of my lunches for the week. So I will make seven containers worth of food. So what I will do is I'll batch cook either quinoa and, or rice and then divide it into seven containers. I batch cook, it's usually ground turkey or chicken breast. So I might barbecue the chicken breast or I'll make like turkey patties. Again, divide it against those set amongst those seven containers. And then I use frozen vegetables. So right now I've been using, I think it's called the California mix. So it's broccoli, cauliflower and carrots and just throw some into those containers and then that's done. So that, I eat the same thing for lunch every day for that week, but like an hour and it is done. And that is from like starting to everything is cleaned up. Three of them are in the fridge, the rest of them are in the freezer. And like I said, I can rotate those from week to week. So I might alternate between rice and quinoa. So I might try different varieties of rice. I might try cooking it in like a bone broth or something like that to give it a bit, a bit of different flavor. I will change the proteins. So maybe I feel like having maybe like a ground beef patty instead one time, or yeah, like the chicken, turkey, maybe some shrimp, like mixing up the protein. And then for the vegetables, like whatever frozen veggie I wanna buy. So I could buy green beans. I could buy that California mix that I've been buying lately. I could buy like peas and carrots. I could buy a stir fry mix. Like you can completely, like it's basically, it would be the same amount of prep, but you're, you could make several different meals. So that is what I do for lunch. And that's what I eat at work where I do have access to a microwave, but like on the weekends, if I'm at a show, it gets tossed on the dashboard of my truck to warm up. Or like I've said, I have eaten it cold before and it's fine, you get over it. <laughs> And then for supper, I would say, for supper is where I have the most variety. But what I've done is kind of like, Monday we eat this, Tuesday we eat this. So I've established like seven suppers that I rotate through during the week. And again, I try to keep it, like I add lots of flavor and sauce and that sort of a thing, but I keep it as basic as possible. So potatoes, sweet potatoes pasta like I always have those on hand and then always rota rotating through the protein we have on hand whether that be again chicken or maybe shrimp or salmon like shrimp and salmon I can keep in the freezer so whatever day I feel like having them I have them and then whatever vegetable I feel like having and then just adding whatever flavoring whatever oil spices whatever I want to those but like on Monday I know I'm having this meal and again it's taking that thinking out of it that I think saves the most time because then you're not sitting there with your thumb up your bum trying to figure out what am I going to make? Do we have the ingredients? Is it going to taste good? Is it going to turn out? Like all those things get completely eliminated by doing this, which that sounds good to me. <laughs> and that's kind of it. But before we wrap up, I did write down 10 just 
quick rapid fire tips that I want to give you guys just to kind of leave you with some things to think about. So tip number one, meal plan and grocery shop ahead of time. And then just to make sure you have all of your ingredients, cook in bulk and divide it in portions for the size that you know you're gonna eat. Use a slow cooker or even, um, what do they call it, an instant pot. Using those things to cook while you're gone, great idea. Pre-cut vegetables and fruit so they're available and like when you feel snacky, you have those ready to go for you. Pre-cook and freeze proteins. So like, cause I feel like proteins, I said these were gonna be rapid, but like I feel like proteins people get caught up in a lot cause then you have to like take it out of the freezer, you gotta thaw it out, then you gotta season it, marinate it, then you gotta cook it. If you pre-do all of that, it's, it saves a lot of time. As I said, utilize frozen fruits and veggies. They are just as nutrient dense, if not more than what you're gonna find in the fresh produce section. Prepare overnight oats or like a yogurt parfait or some sort of breakfast burrito so it's ready to go for you. You can use ready to use pre-washed vegetables. So I didn't mention this earlier, using things like salad mixes and stuff like that. The only thing I would say with those is just watching, they tend to add a lot of things to it that might make a salad less healthy. Like I have nothing against salad toppers and dressings and stuff like that, but they can add a su substantial number of calories and sugar to your meal. So just be mindful of that. Um, have any sauces, dressings, dips that are gonna make your food taste good on hand and ready to go. And yeah, keeping some ready to eat snacks on hand, like your trail mix and that sort of a thing, healthy protein bars and easy to grab fruits and vegetables as well. So with that, we are going to wrap up this episode of the podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to subscribe, rate and review the podcast and share it with a friend. If you guys could share this on social media, that would make me so happy. If you're watching on YouTube, please be sure to give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below on if you've tried any of these tips and subscribe to my channel for future videos, which I release one every single Wednesday. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at strong in the saddle. I post all kinds of horsey content there. So be sure to follow me there. And until next time, remember it's always a good day to ride.